We can talk about how fasting improves longevity all day long until we're blue in the face. But the fact is, if we don't have science, if we don't have data, and if we don't understand physiology, then none of it matters and it doesn't make sense. So in this video, I want to truly help you understand with science and referencing one particular major study that truly shows how fasting has an effect on the cells when it comes down to longevity and living a longer, more prosperous life. So this study was conducted by the Harvard Chan School of Public Health and was ultimately published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism. So a lot of the science that I'm talking about today is coming from this study, but there's also some basic understanding of mitochondrial function that I'm gonna break down before I get into the nitty gritty of this study and how it correlates with fasting. Okay, so first off, we need to understand what the mitochondria is. I'm gonna make this simple because I've talked about it in depth in a lot of other videos. The mitochondria is a portion of a cell that is the energy powerhouse. Okay, it creates adenosine trisphosphate. It creates ATP, which is simply energy. Okay? And it does this through a process known as oxidative phosphorylation. So what that is, is where it takes oxygen, goes through a labyrinth of different processes, and ultimately creates energy via oxygen. So things like our heart, and things like our kidneys, and our lungs, they require a lot of mitochondria. So when we have mitochondria that is functioning well, our heart is functioning well, our lungs are functioning well, our organs are functioning well. It's something that we obviously want to be working in a very clear fashion. But the mitochondria does more than just create energy, and it's constantly changing. It's something known as mitochondrial dynamics. See, the mitochondria goes through states of fission and fusion. Fission, where it's multiplying, and fusion, where they're coming together. So essentially, in the case of fission, mitochondria can actually have these two daughter organelles, and then they can have more organelles. Basically what that means is mitochondria can multiply, and this multiplication can either help or hinder. An analogy that I like to use is this. If you have a kid, you have the ability with that one child to create a profound impact on the world. Because you can take your thought processes, you can take your beliefs, and you can help your child pronounce them even more, okay? Then if you have two kids, you can potentially magnify that 2x. If you have three kids, you can magnify that more and more and more. Some people successfully do this with multiple, multiple children, seven, eight, nine, even 10. But I would honestly argue that if you got up to 20, 30, or 40 kids, that your efficiency would start to diminish. And this is the same kind of thing with that mitochondrial dynamics, okay? If the mitochondria continue to have children and they continue to multiply, they become less efficient. They're just kind of working chaotically. So we want a nice degree of fission and a nice degree of fusion where the mitochondria are growing bigger and stronger, but also multiplying strategically. And this is very, very important when it comes to fasting because this is exactly what I'm gonna talk about and how this study really dove into this. You see, too much fission causes something called fragmentation, also known as hypertabulation. This fragmentation or hypertabulation is simply what it sounds like. You become fragmented. It's like you're getting spread so thin. It's like you're multitasking, trying to manage 40 children. So that's exactly what's happening here. So let's dive in a little bit more with fission and fusion. And I promise I'm gonna make some sense of this, but I have to make sure the science is outlined first. So mitochondria will alternate between two states, fused and fragmented. We want them to be in the fused state more often than fragmented. A little bit of fragmentation is okay. But what has been found is that fasting diets and restricted diets in general actually improve what is called mitochondrial homeostasis, which is the perfect balance between fission and fusion, perfect balance between fused and fragmented. So fasting actually promotes that natural balance so there's not too much of one or the other. A lot of it comes down to the fact that mitochondria do more than just produce energy. You see, mitochondria actually orchestrate what is called apoptosis. Apoptosis is the cell recycling. And this is very critical when it comes down to living for a long period of time. See, when a cell is no longer needed, it doesn't just die. It's not like our body has this ability to just say, you're done, you're dead. You see, what it does is it says, okay, you're no longer needed, so let's extract what we need from you and put it somewhere else. So you have this cell that has a membrane on the outside and it envelops the cytoplasm and all other components of the cell. Well, when this cell is no longer needed, that membrane sort of acts like a bag and everything is sucked out of that bag and recycled. It's like it takes the guts out of the cell and puts them where they need to be used. It's like Robin Hood, okay? He's taking from the already big cell that has a lot to offer but not really contributing to the world, sucks it out and gives it to the cells that actually need it. So it's a really beautiful thing. But the mitochondria orchestrates all this. And if the mitochondrial networks are not working well because they are too fragmented, this apoptosis doesn't occur. So then we have way too much in the way of cells that aren't needed that are just compiling. 
and they're just building up and building up and building up, and they're ultimately wasting space because Robinhood isn't there to come in and suck out the guts. I know, it's kind of graphic, but it's truly how it is. And this all has to do with AMPK. Okay, I know I'm going deep on this, but I promise it's gonna make sense, so stick with me. AMPK, or AMP kinase, is the key to mitochondrial health. It is sort of a dictator of what the mitochondria is gonna do. When energy levels are low, AMPK is up. When energy levels are low, but energy demands are high, AMPK goes up and signals more mitochondrial growth in a positive, clean way. Unless you have a lot of AMPK that's triggering a crazy response. Okay, so good amounts of AMPK trigger healthy mitochondrial growth. But what this study found out was that AMPK ended up increasing based on restricted intake of calories. So this study took a look at nematode worms. And I know this is weird. You're thinking, what the heck does a nematode have to do with life as a human? The reality is nematode worms have similar mitochondrial function as humans do, but they also only live for two weeks. So it makes it a lot easier to overall look at lifespan over a shorter period of time without having to measure or chronicle the life of multiple humans over the course of 100 to 120 years. So with nematodes, it was found that by restricting calories, their levels of AMPK would go up and they would live longer because their mitochondria was able to develop homeostasis and ultimately get to a point where it was able to function in a lot more of a clear way. But to make matters even better, it was also able to process fats a lot better. So the mitochondrial machinery not only became more effective, but it also became more effective at utilizing fats as a fuel source, which means that the beta oxidation processes where oxygen comes in through oxidative phosphorylation was able to happen better. That means more efficiency, more fat burning, more oxygen, and living longer, simply by incorporating fasting or restricting calories. So this is an explanation of how you can live longer utilizing fasting. It helps your body recycle, it helps your body utilize what needs to be utilized better, and overall it increases that AMPK that's gonna allow your mitochondria to fuse the right way and to fragment the right way whenever it's possible. Now I've done a lot of other videos on how to fast, so I'll save that content for those videos. But now you have a general understanding of how fasting improves longevity. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I apologize for the science, but I know that's why you're here. I'll see you soon.